Hi there, thanks for checking this video. I'm Jackson Felden. On this recording, I want to present how you can implement ASR via Grow Policy. Uh, also, please check the video description below to find the link to understand how to implement ASR via Inchuan. But this recording is all about Grow Policy. Initially, I want to show how you can identify if your servers need ASR rules or not. Second, how to dive into the Grow Policy management tool to do the implementation. And then finally, of course, is to get one of my server 2016 and then show the final result if the, the ASR have been applied to that server or not. Anyway, stay with me and let me show all the steps. Before jumping straight into the ASR configuration, let me show where you can find out if you need to implement ASR on your servers and workstations. The best place to go is dive into the security.microsoft.com. And then from here, let me just have a quick look into device inventory. I have a couple of servers and Windows 10 already enrolled on my Defender for Endpoint. And then from here, I can have a look uh, where I am at the moment. Okay. Uh, I will concentrate my demo on this server, server 2016.0x. If I click in there, let me see how things are at the moment when it comes to the whole configuration. Of course, in here on the interface, I could find out if there is any missing uh, patch, you know, if there is any alerts and, you know, so many things we can do from here. But for now, for this recording is all about ASR. The place to go is into the security recommendations. Let me just click in there. And then as the name, as the name suggests in here, I should get a list now from all the improvement I could do on this particular server. Again, I'm talking about my server 2016-01. All the improvements I could do in terms of security. I'm not going to read all of them. You know, as you can see, uh, block executable, uh, block all office applications from creating child processes and, you know, so many here. I just want to point out maybe one or two. That is a good a good one. Use advanced protection against ransomware. And basically all the, the these entries are showing in here because I haven't yet configured on this server. Of course, I could spend more time in here. You know, red doesn't really doesn't look good because, you know, there are so many, let's say, vulnerabilities associated with that. Okay, that's step number one. Uh, when I'm talking about my server 2016, I really need implement ASR. Okay, let's leave this behind. Now the next step is let's dive into the configuration itself. To do that, let me go into my into my domain controller. Okay, from here, I just need quickly to get Hyper-V. I have two virtual machines already running. This is the, my domain controller and this is the server, you know, the 2016 where I want to kind of, you know, affect the ASR configuration. Okay, clicking this guy. This is my domain controller. If you are already familiar with the Grow Policy Management, and then the most important for you is just to kind of know exactly where you need to go and what is the configuration you need to launch. For that, uh, I kind of, you know, a small bad news Unfortunately, at the moment, when we are implementing the ASR, Microsoft doesn't have a kind of, you know, tick box where I can just tick and implement the, the rule. And as you can see, here are all the rules. And then for each rule, there is an ID. And basically, this is, or these are the numbers I need to add into my Grow Policy configuration. To buy a bit of time, I already added, you know, the, the top ones. Just don't want you to waste, you know, too much time watching this, you know, this video. The, what I'm going to do is to implement the last two. And then, as you could see before, use advanced protection against ransomware was exactly the one pointing out by the security.microsoft.com. And what I need to do is, you know, to copy this code. But before that, I will implement the first one to block, or let's say the second, last one, I would say, uh, black, uh, sorry, block Win32 APIs. And okay, it's not too complicated. What I need to do is to make sure I copy the right ID. Let me just right click and copy. Okay, now I have the information I need. And then finally, I can go back to my domain controller and basically implement that first rule. To do that, uh, yeah, let me click on tools and then grow policy management. Okay, that's the guy. 
And yeah, as you can see, I already have a grow policy in here. Of course, the name really doesn't matter. I decided to call MDE policy. And let me have a quick look in here. Click on right click, edit. Let me maximize and then you can see better. Okay, and then the place to go is over policies and then administrative templates. Next step is dive into the Microsoft Defender antivirus. Click in there. So many options here when it comes to the MDE or Microsoft Defender for endpoint. Here is the place where I can set the scan, I can set report and so on. But you know, as I said, this recording is all about ASR. And then if I dive under the Microsoft Defender exploit guard, finally, here is the place, attack surface reduction. And then as I quickly said already, by the time I'm recording this video, unfortunately, we don't have, you know, all of those 16 rules where I could, you know, just uh, click on enable and have the job done. What I need to do is work with these two in here, configure uh, the attack surface reduction, and then do the exclusions as well, if needed. Let me dive into the rules itself. Double click in here. Okay, that's fine. Now the next step is make sure it is enabled. And then finally, okay, click on show. Click in there. As I told you before, to buy a bit of time, I already added uh, 14 rules, you know, I believe. And here, what I'm going to do now is just to add my next one. Uh, I, I will show in a few seconds. Basically, the value means how you want the, you know, the server or the operating system to deal with those rules. Number one is basic to block. Eventually, you know, if there is an, uh, a ransomware attack, the system will block. If I added the rule to avoid the office, the, you know, the office applications in creating, uh, creating child uh, processes, if the rule is number one, I can, uh, you know, easily basically to block any child process. Uh, to understand exactly the value of each rule, let me just go back quickly to my Word document. And here is, you know, the place where you need to go or you need just to kind of understand, memorize. As you can see, number one means a block. Eventually, if there is a, you know, any process that violates one of those rules, the, what I want to do is to block straight away. I understand that can be a little bit, you know, tricky, especially if you don't, you have no idea what are the processes that could conflict or could be catched by the ASR. Initially, for a production server, what you could do uh, is to enable rule as value number two. It means initially you are not going to block anything. The system will audit, you know, uh, every time when there is a clash with a rule in the process or whatever, you know, is happening, the system is not going to block. And then later you can go to the log file, you can go to event viewer to identify exactly what are the processes being affected by the ASR rules. And then later you can, you know, decide eventually to hard, you know, do a bit of hardening on the server and move to block. Uh, another one that's kind of interesting enough, um, it's not new anymore, but it came, you know, after the block and audit is the warn. Uh, the value for that is number six. Warn basically means, as the kind of the name suggests, when there is a conflict, the user will receive or whatever is operating the server or the workstation will receive a warning and then the user can decide to launch the application anyway. And then for the next 24 hours, you know, that decision will be kept. It means if, you know, two hours later, three hours later, the user launch that application again, nothing happens and the application runs with no problem at all. After 24 hours, that setting, you know, is expired. And the next time the user can again decide to allow the application to run or to block via the ASR. Another import, uh, you know, important setting you could implement when you are doing the transition, you know, instead to dive straight to the block, you could first understand how your servers are behaving or will kind of you know, behave after the ASR. And then, or a part of that, you could, you know, do the warn. For now, you know, let's say on my lab, I already uh, know the applications and I want straight away to do the block. Okay, that's fine. Uh, rule number one is done. Now let me, oops, let me just go back in here and get what I'm looking for, the advanced protection as well when it comes to ransomware. Same story, right click in here, copy. Now let me just go back to my virtual machine 
and same story let me just save that configuration again i decided to do a block you know straight away when is needed and job done okay anyway that's the place where you go to implement those 16 asr rules of course you don't need to implement all of them at the same time you can just you know as you could see add you know as you go and of course very important as i said decide if you want to jump straight away into a block mode or go first as audit that would be to be honest the recommend uh, the recommended configuration for a production environment and then uh, you know you could move to warn and then eventually to block okay eventually if you have identified there are a couple of you know let's call in-house applications and they have been blocked by the asr rules and you know those are well-known applications there is no malicious code built in in those folders and those processes what you might need to do is to create some exclusions to make sure those applications they can keep running uh, after implementing the asr to do that double click on that option same story make sure the enable uh, option is here selected and then go to show and you know as i was playing before on my pretending uh, lab let's say there was a conflict with my payroll.exe and then what I, I i did was to implement a folder let me just you know to show the final result do the same story see you know let's say uh, data and uh, let's say i have a system called uh, booking.exe okay and then value just you know just need uh, to keep as zero and guys believe it or not that's pretty much it click on okay now let me save that configuration again and that are no, those are pretty much the steps in order to implement the asr now let me show you the result uh, just to double check the configuration as you could see a few seconds ago all the configuration was done on the mde policy now if i minimize or let me just close down this tool in here and quickly let me show if i go in the uh, active directory user and computers the my server 2016 01x is actually exactly in the corp uh, server okay now i can check the results and what i did as well just to kind of buy a bit of time don't want you to waste too much time you know waiting to buy a, a bit of time i already checked okay this is my server name and a few minutes ago i run a gp update force because i don't want to restart my server and i don't want to wait my server you know to get the updates from the next grow policy cycle and then if you are kind of new on, into the grow policy business gp update force is a quick way to speed up the process okay i think i'm good to go and then finally now i can show the results if i go the best tool is the rsop.msc okay again if you're new in the grow policy that's a really cool uh, tool to get a quick report and understand exactly what are the settings coming from different grow policies and actually what are the grow policies affecting this device now uh, of course my focus here is all about asr and then if i go into the administrative templates under the microsoft defender antivirus of course i could have a look now on my whole configuration i've done real-time protection and you know other bits and pieces but uh, you know my focus here is on the attack surface reduction uh, clicking there the good news initially is the settings seems to be uh, you know enabled uh, please remember this is not a grow policy this is the result from my server 2016 1x let me start with the exclusions if i double click in here now you know i can't really make any changes because this is a reporting tool not a configuration tool finally if i click on show yeah good news a bit of celebration here as you could uh, you know hopefully you can remember the booking.exe was the last configuration i did when you know i did recording and the payroll.exe it was already there you know when i was testing before but yeah that everything looks good the booking.exe is in here okay let me close this tool now let me see the if the last two rules you know have been enabled again let me just double check now let's look for the rule uh, when it comes to the advanced protection for uh, against ransomware let's just find a rule ending on d35 okay if i go there 
double click in here same story i can't make changes double click now i should be able to see the d35 in here yeah there you go and then this is the kind of you know the last thing i wanted to show basically my server 2016 01x was able to get the grow policy coming from the domain controller in the rule d you know big number but finishing on d35 d35 means the last configuration i did on my grow policy are really you know affecting this server you know at the moment the other rule as well yeah now i have a combination of all the rules i really want to this uh, server anyway guys that's pretty much you know the story when it comes to do the the configuration and how you can set uh, check the configuration as well before i go the another quick command you could use as well especially if your servers or devices they have been uh, onboarded into the defender for endpoint is you can use the get mp uh, let me remember yeah oh yeah sorry about that yeah get mp preference and then if i you know just go in there if you scroll up uh, here on the top yeah i should be able to see again just a different tool the exclusions are in here again the booking.exe the period.exe and all the asr rules ids uh, you know i could filter you know a better command to get all the rules but you know they are uh, here as well all the 16 rules i have implemented anyway this was my implementing attack surface reduction via grow policy video if you enjoyed this recording please give a quick like subscribe my channel and see you next time thanks for watching